Welcome to Hot Ones, the show where we ask hot questions and enjoy even hotter wings. Today, my guest is Laura Kenny. She's an occupational therapist and my own sister. How are you doing, Laura? I'm doing great. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Thanks for flying in. Thanks for having me. Maybe we'll get to that later. So, I don't know if you're a fan of the show. Here we have uh, 10 wings in front of you, some fritters actually. And uh, we got 10 sauces. We're gonna start at this end and work our way up. They get progressively hotter. 10 wings, 10 sauces, 10 questions. If you're able to knock them all down, we're gonna give you 30 seconds of uninterrupted internet time. That's all yours. You can plug whatever you want at the end of the show. You ready? I'm ready. All right, awesome. Let's start with number one. Right over here. Well, you're an occupational therapist. What's the biggest mistake that typical people make in their daily routines that they're just not aware of and they could probably, just one subtle message that you'd love to give to all of America and the world to get them into better health? Mm. I guess, I don't know. I mean, most people I work with are really nice great patients to have, but there's always some that just don't really trust the process, you know, and kind of question what we're doing, and, uh, you know, don't necessarily have that good safety awareness, but um, we're just here to help, and, uh, you know, look for the team, take care of you, and because that's, that's all I can really, really say. Listen to your healthcare professionals, everyone out there. They know what they're doing. Hey, right for number two? All right. Let's keep it going. Dippy dippy. So you flew all the way out from Denver, Colorado. I did. So I just gotta ask one question. Why Denver? Denver? Well, number one, the mountains, blown. Ski, hike, just they're the best. Um, also have some friends there. My partner Whitley's family is there. Her brother, parents. Um, it's gorgeous. And uh, if you remember, every uh, February you come over and pretty good skiing out there. Just shred up the mountains. We have a, a yearly fun time. It's awesome. The mountains can't compare to New England. I don't blame you. Not the same, but both are good. Oh, well, we can't wait till next February. Continue to circle around to number three here. Third wing, third question. So that everyone will know not to mess around with this girl. She is a world champion, third degree black belt. Laura, can you tell us what that competition experience was like to get that world championship title? It was pretty great. Um, it was uh, in the, what looks like a double stick. Actually, it was single. <laughs> Bung money is what we uh, call it. Big stick. Yep. And um, I, I mean, I did practice, you know, really hard um, for like that year or so. And more anticipating than hearing that judges score exactly. world champion yeah. fun times fun time. cruising on long, along right to number four right. grabbing the water early you might save some that you might need it later well, I get thirsty. All right, this is right here cheap of gold Pretty unique one. You might pick up on, uh, what's it called? Curry. Oh. Curry and mustard. Oh, 
Yeah. One of my favorites. As I mentioned earlier, we're having some vegetarian wings. Because you yourself have been a vegetarian for years, actually. Well practiced in it. You've taken me to a vegetarian restaurant and it really opened up the menu to all sorts of items that I've never heard of. Of course, everyone by now knows the quinoa, etc. What is the substitute meat of choice that you would recommend for people who want to dabble into a vegetarian food? Um, there's a lot of options out. Um, almost any meat that you would want, there's a substitute for it. Um, something I think that is really exciting is um, like the Impossible Burger. Uh, so, you know, if you really love hamburgers, um, I would try the Impossible Burger. It looks like, smells like, and cooks like real uh, beef, and it's delicious. They have my burger thing. Impossible one of my favorite establishments. I'll also yesterday. try one. Nice. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, if you're not super into hamburger, the these chicken wings are great. Lots of frozen chicken um, items available. Uh, they've got deli slices. Almost anything you can do. Easier to transition now than ever? I would say so. Cool. Yeah. Well, as we arrive to number five here, there's a tradition on the show that you may be aware of. Pictures that need more context. I'm going to show you a couple pictures and you're going to provide the context. Does that sound all right? Sounds great. Start with this one. <laughs> what is going on here? That's a great question. This was at, this was in Keene, New Hampshire. Um, my friend Amy uh, went there for college and we were over one of her friend's apartments, um, having some beverages, and found that on the table. <laughs> and I so this is a keen artifact. I don't know what it's for, but I made it my present for the night. Wow. So what are we doing here? Deep dives. All right. I recognize that place. This was back in like 2010, maybe. Looks like you got a clear trash bag and you're standing knee deep in a pile of clothes. The undergarment district where you can buy uh, thrift, uh, the thrift store where you can buy clothes by the pound. I believe we're looking for a Halloween costume. As the Boston College kids, the college kids are known to do. Yep. Do you know what you wore that year? I want to say I was a pirate. See the white and black in there? You're looking yeah. at a white and black shirt. I Very piratey. So. Ooh, what's this? This is a great one. That is me as a little child with the uh, painted macaroni frame as one does when they are. Gold plated. Four. <laughs> oh, dragonfly girl there. That's a dragonfly uh, sweatshirt. Yep. And a red little stash. Red belt before you even knew what red belt was. That. This is me with my sculpture of Bonholm, which is bon the uh, mascot of the Winter Festival up in Quebec uh, City in Canada. They have a lot of ice sculptures and fun, fun winter activities up there. Our neighbors to the north know how, know how to have fun in, in the winter. What are we doing here? Looks like some more college fun. Uh, found a skateboard in one of the uh, Northeastern dorms and pushing my friend on it. Doesn't seem to be else? anyone else in the racing competition here. Was was this did this end in a did, did this end safely? Do you recall? For sure. Okay. Good. Looks fun. Yeah. Here we are with. With a collar that I never even obtained. Look at that red collar. That is full blown instructor. I mean, it's a training instructor. Training instructor. But, so modest. Uh, it's no yeah. joke. That's uh, me and my friend Heather, who we competed with and hung out with. And training for 
lead with um, yeah, did uh, take one mil from like five or six um, on until like maybe sixteen, and kind of ended with just teaching. Um, so just probably, teaching, instructing. Probably towards the end. It has to be. Look at these chevrons. Look at your collar. Legit instructor. And uh, oh my God. this is a little more recent. So Same funny. digging too deep. What what do you got in your hand there? You're twirling something. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. So my thirtieth birthday celebration at a drag brunch. See, uh, looks like maybe uh, something's mixed with that orange juice in front of you. You got a sash on. Awesome. You got a big old grin. It's possible. Is that a good thirty? It was so much fun. Cool. Thanks for walking down a trip in memory lane with us. Yeah. Let's move on to our sixth wing before these things get freezing cold. So you're an expert skier and boarder, as yeah. I've seen. Right. For those we love. And maybe in this room even. Which of the two sports would you say we should someone should start out with and why? one day where I do an episode without having to get up. But while you enjoy that last wing, I'm going to pause and grab something that I forgot. As always, every episode. Back up water. We might need it. All right. We ready for number six? Actually, that was number six. You ready for number seven? We're on. <clears throat> seven, eight, nine, eight, eight. Oh, this pepper. Reaper. The garlic reaper. <clears throat> we're actually on the zombie. Of the zombie. Nice. So we're well into the back half here. We've got quite a head of steam going. Let's keep going. Could you explain what a 10 and 10 is at Dunkin' Donuts? It's uh, 10 creams and 10 sugars, you know? I think it's for people who don't like coffee. They just cover it up with some milk and sugar, and, you know, some, someone ordered that. Before. Cover it up? Oh. Cover it up. <laughs> cover up the taste of any, any coffee that might be lingering. I'll never forget that day. Uh, you know, high school jobs like we all have, I come in to say hi and see with a headset on. <laughs> Walk over to this vat of sugar and just take this little teaspoon and just shovel one after another over, over, over. Oh, so, wow. so I asked, what, what the heck did you just do there? Oh, that was a 10 to 10, straight face. Like it was completely normal. Some people America, like, uh, America has some uh, unhealthy. No, you don't say. Ooh. Like I want a little coffee with the shirt? Yeah, we're picking it up now. That got real. <laughs> Are we sweating? Uh -huh. I have <laughs> 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 Alright, uh, for number eight, we're trying something new with the show. As you enjoy this eighth wing, 
We're gonna do the lightning round. You will have one minute. Shelly will be my counter. You will have one minute as the instructor that we alluded to earlier to name as many of the 10 class management skills that you can. I can use a pen. I'll, I'll know which ones you didn't say. Ready? <laughs> yeah. Go. Set mood and tone of class. Create a positive climate. Personal approach and individual contact. Set direct goals. Give thoughtful feedback to student response. Reinforce positive behavior. Give realistic praise. Uh, I don't know nine. Ten, teach concepts of personal victory. Nine is the first to ten. There's one missing. There's one missing? Yeah. One number. Uh, I put it as eight, but that may not. You know, I didn't read it from them etched in stone. Did I already say Maybe it's seven. You have 15 seconds. I'm tearing, it's hard to look at this list. <laughs> Or, I don't know, I might get only the nine. Nine's pretty good, I, I like it. The one missing was give positive correction rather than criticism. That's it. But you, it, you got it, you nailed it. Yeah, you know, they came back. And they flew so out of you without you even trying. That was impressive. They were, they were in there and I didn't even know it. So we were supposed to be enjoying eight during that. I'm Maybe the lightning round isn't a good idea. I'm scared. <laughs> yep. Is that, is that a thing? Is that a strategy? Should I have been doing that? This one's not as bad. Oh yeah? Maybe, maybe you're anticipating it now before it hits you, blindside you. Oh, that's pretty good. Cruise right along, number nine. <laughs> I feel like I had a bag of flour. A bag of flour? Dry? Yeah. You get my voice. All right. Of all the, uh, I'll grab one soon. Don't you worry. Oops. Of all the sports you expertised, the one that I think is probably the most enjoyable to watch is horseback riding. And let me tell you, this girl had blue ribbons lining her bedroom. Very impressive in the getup, doing work on those big old horses. Blue ribbons galore. So I've seen you do this many times. Can you explain to us how you get a horse to jump over a gate? Right, I said. Um, well, the horses are definitely, you know, well trained. So they kind of, they kind of know what to expect. Oh my god, my mouth. You're on the horse. Kind of take it around to, uh, to jump. And um, you know you get get it to a, a trot or a canter, and uh, then you That's gotta go, turns there. go in a jumping position. Um, you know, kind of steer it's the a horse position. straight ahead and straight. You uh, you get your butt off the saddle. You hold on to the rein. Did you your life? The reins in the mane, uh, so that you know when they jump, you don't fly off. So you kind of brace yourself. And uh, maybe give it a little extra kick to make sure it's gonna actually go over it instead of spooking it and going off to the side. And you hope it just knows that you want it to jump over. So and, grab on uh, and hope? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Try to remember that. Sometimes. So, so how are you feeling? Are you nervous at number nine right there? I notice you haven't touched it. How are we supposed to? Oh, right. I might enjoy a little sip of water myself. I'm crying, you're crying. I'm most definitely crying. <clears throat> Other than episode one, I have never done this without crying. Because episode one didn't have the, the lineup we have today that you're enjoying. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's your number nine. I don't see tears. I see watery eyes. Woo. 
power through. So what's in that one? Hot stuff. That is the bomb. Yeah. Habanero peppers is the first thing I get. Careful around the eyes. I would not recommend blowing your nose. I would, not, I would recommend against that. <laughs> Turning red there. <laughs> Get your bubble. Your bubble. Almost there. There's the tears. Are we ready to move on? Okay. We've reached number 10. We have a little tradition here on number 10. You don't have to do it, but number 10 is called the last dab for a reason. The wind's already coated in it, but you're welcome to join me in a one last dab on top. If you'd like, okay. I'll leave it there for you. Careful around the eyes. Give her a fresh one. Oh <laughs> <laughs> We've made it to number ten. Oh god. As we conquer Hot Ones Mountain together, the last question is: Who is animal. That would be a nickname that I had <coughs> in karate growing up. Whew. Um, I believe it was, you know, when you're sparring, fighting, that first of energy, like an adrenaline rush. <coughs> You're whispering to me. I'm very close. <laughs> I can't imagine it being hard. We're so close. You're almost there. <laughs> One shot that Very nicely done. You've conquered Hot Ones Mountain. You did it. We're gonna, as promised, we're gonna, get, actually, you know what? I have one last request from you. Can we, uh, for the camera, for America, can we get a whatever type of number one, number two front kick to the camera in your most intimidating key op along with it? Oh, God. <laughs> Ferocious! I want the leap to hear you. Oh God! <laughs> ah! <laughs> the neighbors are intimidated. Woo. I see them shaking in a little bit too soon. All right, that's awesome. Oh, as promised, now you get you, you've done all. You've conquered the mountain. You've intimidated the neighbors. Give you 30 seconds to plug whatever you want. What's going on with your life? Let us know. Uh, well. Uh, 
humans, um, black humans and people of color, um, and really donate um, to, there's a list of organizations, um, go out and protest if you can, um, you know, act, uh, show up for and support people, you know, in your everyday life if you see injustice. Um, Fantastic. Great message. I think we all love that. We got one last thing for you for conquering the mountain. We got a couple prizes for you. Here's a uh, free, or I guess a, a discounted Impossible Whopper. Oh! And uh, here's some classic Taiwan cards. And uh, we got this camera. Let's get a picture. Let's get out of here. Let's run our, our mouths in the lake, please. Oh, God. So we got to pick our head. Get the boogers. Good. Awesome. Nice job. I wasn't sure you were going to make it through the sand. You well, did ten, it. Well, 10 didn't even hurt me. <laughs> but yeah, DeBomb is quite the speed bump.